Well, summer is here and with some recent controversies around SPF levels in some sunscreen brands, you might be wondering what you need to look out for. Well, for all of the details and advice, here's the host of Radio National's Health Report, Dr Norman Swan. So let's start with the sun. The sun is a grade one carcinogen that causes cancer. So that's on the surface, UVB light. There's also UVA light, ultraviolet A light, which gets under the surface of the skin. So not only does it cause cancer in the skin, various skin cancers, including melanoma, under the skin, it stimulates the immune system and causes an inflammatory reaction, which almost certainly spreads to other parts of the body. So there's some truth to the notion that if you look older on the outside because of sun aging, you're probably older on the inside as well. So you want to minimize your exposure to the sun, particularly with you know, the fairer skin that you have. Um, and there, the best way to shield yourself from the sun is actually with clothing and covering your body with a hat um, and um, really putting sunscreen just on the exposed parts. But of course, when you go to the beach, that's harder to do. So with sunscreen, there's a long history to sunscreen, going back to Roman times, perhaps even before. And they, they would put olive oil on the skin, for example. And the reason they wanted uh, to protect against sun was actually a racist idea, which was that even in cultures where coloured skin was normal, in those cultures, the fairer your skin, the lighter coloured your skin, um, the less prejudice you actually you know, experienced. And so they, what, people wanted to appear as light skinned as possible. So that was cultural rather than anything medical or health wise. And they would use all sorts of things. Probably the most effective was olive oil. But the SPF of olive oil is probably only two or three. So it does give you some protection, but really not very much. And then it's developed over the years. The first description of sun causing cancer was in the late 19th century. And that was an occupational one in, in people who were seafarers. People didn't go out in the sun and get a suntan. Coco Chanel in France was the first person to promote a suntan, really, lying on a boat on the Med, and then su suddenly it took off to getting a suntan. Then they started to realize just how potent the sun was in causing both aging and skin cancers. And then sun uh, screens developed from there. So there's two kinds of sunscreens, really. One is a sunscreen that reflects the sunlight back and absorbs the UVB light, UV light. So those are things like uh, zinc oxide or titanium dioxide, which these days you can get in a nanoparticle form, so it's, your skin doesn't go white when you use them. Um, and then there are the, the commoner, you, you want a broad spectrum sunscreen. You want one that says it will block UVA and UVB light, so you don't want this penetrative UV light getting in under the skin. Our, our, chemi our essentially chemical concoctions or chemical mixes of substances which really do, in a high-tech sense, absorb the ultraviolet light rather than reflect it back. And cosmetically, they're much more acceptable to people. Then people will get worried, well, is there a risk from some of the chemicals in there? And over time, they've got rid of chemicals that might have had a risk attached to them. There's two at the moment that the TGA, the Therapy of Goods Administration, are particularly concerned about. But the reality is with sunscreens, before we get on to the CHOICE study, which showed the difference, is that the, the margin of safety is based on somebody using sunscreen 240 days of the year to their whole body. Now, you don't do that. I don't do that. Most people don't do that. They cover their bodies and it's hands, face and arms and, until you've got a day at the beach. And we're not going to the beach necessarily every day. So the margin of safety is huge even with chemicals, there's a bit of information that there may be an issue, uh, an issue with. So, that, so you can relax about almost all sunscreens on the market. So the question is, which ones do you buy? Because the Choice survey showed that some companies were either deliberately or inadvertently lying about the, sun, the SPF factor. So the good news about, that's bad news. The good news about that study is that most of them scored over 20, even though they were saying 50, and misrepresenting themselves, most, and that's wrong, most scored over 20. Now, the studies that have been done on sunscreen, and mainly in Queensland, study in Nambour in Queensland, suggest that the safety, the sunscreens really start to become effective at around about an SPF of 16, and particularly 20 and above. So 
almost any sunscreen, regardless of what they say on the packet, is, is going to give you that kind of coverage, particularly if you're covering your skin as well. That's not to excuse the companies. So if you want to know which sunscreens to buy, you need to go to the Choice website and show the ones that they got a good result on. But um, it, it really, the, the risk versus benefit is well in favour of sunscreens.